What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to talk about sharpening the Ganzo FH21-GY, um, the gray model. Um, I'm going to start out with the Shapton Glass 500. The, uh, the factory edge on it was decent, but I think a new edge on it is, is going to be appropriate. I think it'll it'll perform a little better. This is kind of the the channel knife, so to speak. This is going to be the regrind. Um, I did want to I did want to see how it performs before I regrind it, because once I do that, there's no going back. So I just wanted to give it a shot. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and start. That's a pretty high angle. I actually started hitting the, the primary bevel just now. They put a really steep angle on this thing. It's not my normal, like where my hand sits on other knives. This is probably about five to seven degrees higher. It's almost like I just started thinning this thing out. So I guess it's gonna be appropriate to do a regrind now that I just did that. Sharpens really easy though. I already started getting a burr. So you should be able to see where I started uh, hitting back that primary. You can see right there. I started coming back on the primary. That secondary edge is really, really steep. Usually a knife when, you know, I'm not holding it that low. So, uh, on knives that I'm used to sharpening, what I'm holding right now is probably like a 14 or 15 degree angle. And to not hit that primary grind just now, I probably had to come up to about a 20 to 22 degree angle, which that's pretty high, especially for you know, a little pocket knife. But it is what it is. It's always fun to make mistakes on video. Hopefully it'll save you guys. So remember, if you ever sharpen the FH21, make it a little higher than you think because, if you freehand sharpen anyways, make it a little higher than you think because uh, it's it's easy to, to start hitting that primary, um, the primary grind. There's the bevel when I got the angle perfect. Um, this tip, you don't have to bring it up really high. If you can see the profile of the knife, it's not it's not a big swooping blade. So the more you know belly you have, the more challenging it can be to sharpen. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward knife. So if you're a new freehand sharpener, this won't this won't be that tough of a knife to, to sharpen, I don't think. Says the guy who who just started thinning out the, the primary the primary bevel because he didn't get the angle right, so maybe don't take my word for it. Alright, 
So, <clears throat> show you what that 500 is looking like. It's got a little bit of a shine to it, but you know, not like a crazy polish. Obviously, it's only 500. Well, maybe not obvious to everyone, but. There you can see. We got nice even bevel lines, so that's a good sign. Bevel line will pretty much tell you everything about what you know how you're sharpening. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off this 500 grit. Set that off to dry. Grab the 2000 grit. These are good stones for, for a lot of steels. Um, once you start getting into like your higher carbide volume steels, um, like your uh, 10V class, uh, you're, you know, these like the Shapton Pros aren't going to do it. The Shapton glass, um, you can sharpen just about just about everything, but you're not going to be able to sharpen like your Maximet. Um, even like your S110V might start getting a little tricky. Um, like Rex 121, Rex 45. Like once you start getting into those really wear resist. Excuse me, wear resistant steels. Um, it starts getting to where you need diamond and CBN. Uh, so the cutoff for for these for me is usually like ZDP 189. Um, S110V I'll use diamond. Uh, Maximet I'll use diamond. Uh, even M390. M390. Um, you know like. Shaft and glass will cut M390, but I just find like once I get into those tough steels, I'll uh, even M4. I know even the Shaft and Pro will cut M4, but I just I, I like using the diamond because it's a lot quicker. Probably should have specified that this is D2 steel. I might not go any higher than 2000. I think I'll probably just stay at the 2000 and strout. So and there we were just deburring. All right, now grab a strop quick, and I'll just use like your basic uh, green chromium oxide strop. Try and keep it simple for you guys. So you know, guys who are who are newer at this, who don't have you know like the fancy uh, diamond sprays and kangaroo leather and you know all that kind of stuff. I just I want to try to make it as easy as I can for you, for newcomers.
That's actually a pretty nice polish with just that green chrome ox after the 2000. 2000 leaves a nice polish, so there you can see it. Um, it's like a semi mirror. You know, it's not obviously not like a true mirror polish. Once you get to like the 5000, you'll start seeing that. 12,000, you'll really start seeing it. But for D2, which, you know, is. It's not a steel that I would ever take to that level, but, um, and especially this knife, but for, for what it is, you know, I think that works well. One more thing I think I'm going to do is just, uh, throw a slurry on this real quick with the Tenjo Nagra. See if we could help improve that edge a little bit and uh, you know, help it along with deburring and stuff. It's the only thing about the Chinese steel is the heat tree is not very good. And then just go ahead and hit it on the green chrome, chromium oxide strap one more time. Let me go grab a piece of paper quick. Yeah, that seemed to do it. I snagged something or I might have snagged something it could be the back of the the back of the knife yeah there I think there's a little catch right here yeah I think the back needs to be strapped a, a little bit more yeah you can see right where that catch is right there um, there might just be like a little piece of burr still, you know, still stuck right there. There you go. So that did it. All right, I'm happy with that. So this was a little bit trickier to deburr. Um, but you know what? It's kind of to be expected with this knife. It's a Ganzo. It's a $25 Chinese made knife. I don't expect it to deburr that, that easily, but um, you know, that's one trick. The slurry does, does kind of help. Um, it does help with with deburring and uh, and getting a, a nice polish too. Some people say that slurries don't work, but I I would disagree with that. But to each their own. So I'll show you that bevel one last time. Uh, it's a pretty even bevel after that mistake on the other side with. Uh, with putting the angle a little bit too low so just remember if you guys do sharpen this knife if you have it uh, make sure you put a pretty steep angle on it because 
Otherwise, you're going to be hitting that primary grind right there. You're going to have to put it a little steeper, closer to probably like 22. Um, but it's okay. We're going to be regrinding this guy anyways, so I'm not too worried about it. And again, it's a you know $20 knife, so this thing is pretty sharp, though. Definitely shaves hair. See if I can get it in frame. There you should be able to see the hair on the knife right there definitely shaves arm hair so you know it's not hair whittling but I'm not expecting to get hair whittling out of D2 um, it's it's a little overkill with a knife like this so all right guys that's really gonna do it now uh, thanks for coming along this is Mike with iHeart Knives hopefully you might have taken something away from this um, if you did go ahead and give it a like uh, subscribe if you haven't already uh, leave a comment if you have something to say, good or bad, and uh, that's going to do it for this video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.